So we wanted to kick things off right this morning for you, right? We wanted to bring in somebody that we knew could get you inspired, that could motivate us, that could talk about not only how to inspire you and motivate you, but also interlock that with what we're all about, with this health, nutrition, and that type of stuff. And so we thought, who would be better than to bring in an amazing trainer? And so I have to tell you, Michael and I come from the same, from the same town, and I gotta tell you, have you ever wanted to work with Roseanne Barr? <laughs> so would you say that somebody that could work with Roseanne could pretty much do pretty much anything, right? <laughs> right? No, I've actually met her, she's actually really, really super cool, but she's an actress. Diva. And so what happens is, you know, she's, she's, she's absolutely amazing, but if you look at a difficulty of how to work with people, one of the things that makes you a professional is being able to work with different people in different scenarios in different environments and have everybody coming out totally happy, right? And so we thought there was no better way to start this entire convention off than to have Michael Torsha with us. And so you're going to hear from Michael. We're going to roll a quick video, and then I'm going to bring him, on, bring him on. But here's the deal. After we watch the video, it's only a few minutes long. It just kind of gives you a little flavor of who he is. We're going to bring on some music, and we're going to bring him to the stage. But what I need from you guys is when we bring him to the stage, he's the very first keynote speaker of the very first 124 convention. This is going to be a moment that is going to be recorded on videotape. It's going to be played for years and years to come. So if you're lame, it's going to be lame. <laughs> Do you guys catch me, right? I'm one of you guys, right? I want to keep this thing as fun as possible as well. OK? So Carlos, if you can cue the video up for Mr. Michael Torsha. OK, all the way from next week. All the way from next week, Southern California. I hope you're ready, boss. I'm Cue up the music. Carlos, get on your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your very first keynote speaker of the very first annual 124 convention, Mr. Michael Torsha. Okay, I don't know if uh, Casey warned you, but we're gonna work out, so why don't everybody get up? <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> I, well, it's a spot? pleasure to be here, and an honor. Well, and uh, I'm also wanted to say, first of all, I'm a member of 124, by the way. You know, what a lot of people don't know, you know, they always think of me as a celebrity trainer, but what they don't know when you saw in the video, is that I was an overweight child. Actually, I was obese. I was 52 pounds overweight. The school doctor had asked me to bring my mom into school and speak with us. So of course, I told my mom we have to come and speak to the doctor. And uh, as we went into his office, he told my mom and I that if I didn't lose weight and become physically fit, that I could possibly have a heart attack or stroke, or have diabetes by the time I'm 40. And that's because cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure runs in my family. And heart disease, too. And my mother was concerned that if at 14 I'm this unhealthy, what's going to happen 5, 10, 15 years later? So she was determined to help me. And as my mom walked out of the doctor's office, I was holding her hand. And her, I remember this to this day. Her hand was clammy and she was trembling. And that, when you're 14 years old, scares you. And I knew that this was something I had to take serious because I was a typical junk food kid. I'd come home from school, I'd have that A&W root beer, I mean a container that big with the big barbecue, extra spicy chips. And I'd put on my cartoons after school and I would just eat the chips and guzzle the soda. And I felt terrible, but I kept doing it. It was an addiction I had at 14 years old. 
So what I realized is that I needed to make a change, but the encouragement of my mother was the driving force until I then understood I had to take a serious step towards changing my life. So first my mother said, okay, instead of two meatball sandwiches and two Twinkies and two chocolate milks, I'll give you one meatball sandwich, one Twinkie, and one chocolate milk. So she cut it in half. Well, that didn't work. So then I went to my father and I said, Dad, I need to lose weight. I need exercise. He goes, oh, you want exercise? Okay, go mow the lawn, cut the hedges. <laughs> then when you're done, if you want some more exercise, cut Uncle Tony's lawn and cut his hedges. All right, so sure enough, I'm out there, you know, mowing the lawn, going back and forth, taking these long steps. My father thought I was nuts. I was doing like lunges while doing a, cutting the grass. So then he goes, you want more exercise? Go over Uncle Tony's. I go over Uncle Tony's. Now, of course, my Uncle Tony was an amazing chef and had a pizzeria. <laughs> so guess what? After I'm done mowing the lawn, cutting the hedges, raking everything up, Miguel, come on. He'd give me a half tray of lasagna. I got fatter. Went back to the doctor's office. He said, now I want your father to come in. I was like 60 pounds of weight. So sure enough, my mother said, I got an idea. We're gonna watch this guy on TV. His name is Jack Lane. I'm like, Jack who? She goes, no, you're gonna watch this guy after school, no more soda, no more chips, no cartoons. I said, okay. Sure enough, I'm watching him with the dog and his wife, and this is what 20 pounds of fat looks like. I'm like, oh God. But I did it anyway. And my mother did it with me because she didn't want me to feel like something was wrong with me. So she was overweight too, so we both did it. And sure enough, I started feeling better. I didn't really start losing weight that fast, but I started being more aware because during that show, Jack really got the message that we are what we eat and you have to be physically active. So after a while, I started eating more vegetables. My body craved it. And I wanted more meat and fish and eggs. And I really didn't want as much bread because I felt, well, the bread and butter. So I started naturally desiring better foods. I started feeling better. Because actually when I drank that soda and ate those chips and ate all that other crap, I actually didn't feel good at all. And what I noticed was people always said, you're always so tired. But as my father would say, you're so lazy. And so he drilled in my head, you're lazy, 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 lazy. And I said, well, maybe I'm lazy. But it was because I was always tired. It was overloading my system. My, my adrenals were shot. I was overloaded with sugar. I was full of chemicals. Because in those days, they really had a lot of chemicals in the chips and the soda and all the other cakes and things that I was eating. So then I started realizing that I was really starting to feel better when I ate healthier. So then I associated eating healthier, feeling better. And then when I started wanting to exercise, I said to my mom, I got this flyer, there's a, a, a gym workout program at the YMCA in White Plains. This was in New York. And I want to, you know, join this program. She goes, okay, well, let's, let's go. So we go over there and uh, they sign me up and it was, at that time it was like something like $25. She goes, Okay, well, this is my shoe money. I've been saving up to buy new shoes, but you know what? You need to get healthier. So she goes, I'll start seeing you up another time. So she signed me up. Now, she goes, I'm going to go to the Grand Union shopping. I'll come back in an hour. I go down into the, it's like a dungeon. In those days, weightlifting was like animals did it. It wasn't by the pool, the basketball court, all the pretty stuff. It was a dungeon with a light bulb hanging in it. <laughs> A fan going, swirling the dust and the dirt. You're always scratching your eyes and your nose because you're so itchy. And you see all these brutes walking around. <laughs> and you had your Olympic lifters. Then you had your power lifters. And it was like clicks, like gangs in a prison. <laughs> you know? Then you had the bodybuilders looking at themselves all the time. So I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? So I'm, I, I, I see this huge guy and he had these big arms, and he was like curling all this weight. And I waited till he put the barbell down. I said, excuse me, sir, is that a good exercise to build my arms? And he, he looks at me and goes, 
can't you see I'm busy? You can't beat it. I'm like, oh, okay. So then I sit down on the bench, and this is at 14 years old. And I'm going, oh, my mother's going to kill me now. She spent her shoe money. <laughs> I'll just stay here for the next 15 minutes, and then I'll go out and like, say I had a good workout, throw some water on me, you know? <laughs> and all of a sudden, this huge guy comes over, big sweatshirt. He goes, hey, kid, you want to build big muscles? I go, yeah. He goes, all right, come over here. Let me show you. He goes, that guy's a jerk. Come over here. <laughs> so then he shows me all these things, and I start going, wow, I feel, this feels good. He goes, OK, now, I want to see you here on Wednesday at the same time. And we're going to talk about your diet. But what I want you to do, I'm going to give you an assignment. I want you to get it like a bucket. You know, like your mother mops with the floor and she puts it in the bucket. Get that bucket. And I want you to put a little bit of everything you eat that one day. And I want you to look at it. Then Wednesday when you come back, I want you to tell me what it looks like. I said, oh, okay. But I said, listen, we don't have a lot of money. I don't have money to pay. He goes, no, no, I don't want your money. Because someday you are going to be a champion bodybuilder. I know it. You've got the structure. But you've got to learn how to train and eat right and strengthen your mind because you need to have a strong mind. So if you pay it forward, you give me a word that for the rest of your life, you will pay this forward. You will inspire, educate, and motivate other people to eat healthier and work out. That is my payment. I said, oh, you got a deal. So okay. So then I go home. And then, uh, you know, the next day, I have that bucket I took out of the closet, and I have it under the table, and I'm eating my pancakes and waffles and eggs and juice and jam, all the butter on the toast, and I'm putting it in the bucket. So my father's like looking at me, and he just went to work. <laughs> then, you know, I, you know when I, before I went to, to school, I put some of the Twinkies and the, and the other, the meatball sandwiches. We had a lot of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Mother liked to make meatballs and macaroni. Okay, so then I come home from school and I'm pouring a root beer and chips. I love cheese doodles. Oh, I was hooked on cheese doodles. They were so salty, you know? And, I, and, there. and then there was some sour leaf cake I couldn't resist, and I only liked the icing of the chocolate. The chocolate was the best. So I, I put some of that in there, and I put the bucket away. Then father comes home. My mom made a lasagna. So then I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm putting the lasagna in there from the table. My father goes, what are you doing with the, putting the lasagna in the bucket for? I said, well, I, I have homework. The, the coach at the, the YMCA said, I got to put the, the food in the bucket and then look at it. He goes, <laughs> hey, what kind of coach is this? <laughs> in a bucket? Listen, get the bucket, put outside, because the dog eats that, it's going to die. <laughs> The dog wanted to eat it, actually. So I put it outside. So the next day, I go to the YMCA, and his name was Frank Marcello. I'll never forget. I said, Frank. Oh. He goes, I know. He said, what did you see? I said, it, it, it looked like a garbage pill. Exactly. You, he's pointing in the stomach, because I this belly, are a human garbage pill. OK? <laughs> So why do you think you feel terrible? You're tired, and you don't feel good, and I'm sure the other kids in school have some you know, choice names for you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you realize one time, I told my mother, I said, you know what, I'm tired of hearing Porky Pig, Pugsley, all these different names, Fat Soul, Fat Slob, all these names. She said, oh, come on, a few people said that, it bothers you? I go, no, Ma, it's a lot. She goes, okay, I'll tell you what, here's a pad. Write down how many times someone says something negative to you. I said, you sure you want to do that? No? Okay. So I come home from school, and here you go. She goes, 367 times? I go, yeah, well, some of the kids said it over, over, and over, over, a few times. So does that count? Because every time they said it, I said it again. Or is it just every person she goes, never mind. She goes, OK, we have, we have to make a change. We really, really do. She goes, well, the, the coach told me I can't be eating all this stuff. She was like, what? Well, no bacon and none of this and that. Show. So what's left? You, know, you say it to an Italian mother, love to go with what's left. You know? So sure enough, we made the change. But watching Jack LaLanne inspired me. He was always full of energy. His wife was full of energy, even the dog. The, that was a beautiful German Shepherd. I don't know if you, uh, 
any of you remember this show, but that was a beautiful shepherd, you know? And I grew up on a farm, so I'm, I love animals. So anyway, so it really triggered something. Then I started getting into competition and winning shows. And now all of a sudden, I remember I won this show it was a teenage something in Jersey, Atlantic City or something. And as soon as they called my name, I was like, wow, I won. And this group of kids comes up and they like, hey, you look amazing. C can I have your autograph? I'm like, to me, I was still that fat kid, you know? So I was like, go hop in this. So you want my autograph? I said, okay, so I'm signing it, whatever, what's your name, and signing autographs. And oh, wow, I just, I felt empowered. I felt amazing. So then I remember after I changed, I came outside, and this other kid comes up with his father. Really, really stocky kid. Sort of reminded me of uh, me before I got into bodybuilding. He goes, could you tell me, like, one thing which really helped you get that type of physique? I go, yeah, a lot of aggravation. Because that was my driving force. I took the negative and I made it into a positive. So I said, okay, well, all right, make fun of me, call me names, it's okay, I'm gonna show you. And I trained hard, I ate right, and my body grew and grew and grew. And now, as I went to school, I showed my mother. Like how many people said all these good stuff? Bad things? Zero. And now think about it, if you're going somewhere, and, and, and no matter whether you're overweight or whatever, but someone's saying you're dumb, you're stupid, you're ugly, whatever, it's gotta affect you. I don't care how positive you are, it's gonna drive you nuts. Your, your self-worth is gonna go down, you're gonna feel horrible. But now, especially as a young person, and whether you're young or old, if people keep saying, hey, you look great, wow, working out a lot, huh? Wow, look at your waist, what did you, what did you do to get that waist like that? Wow, you always got so much energy. Boy, you're so fast. Now, I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play sports, you know, because before what I did was when we had gym class and we had the track, and then we had like the bleachers here. So I'd run with the team, go around, came around, watch it for the coach, shh, under the bleachers. I figured, I got this, okay. Then after that, we're doing push-ups. When the coach wasn't looking, ah, yeah, eight, Nine, <laughs> 10, 11, 12. So finally, the coach was like saying to me, he goes, all right, Torsha, how many times are you gonna keep sliding under the bleachers and doing this thing and faking the, you know, you're just hurting yourself. But as time went on, it, it started resonating. I had to do it for the right reasons and I had to do it for myself, not because I just wanted to be thin and accepted, but I had to do it for the right reasons but it was people around me were supportive. Not everybody was so supportive, so the ones that weren't so supportive said, okay, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. Because I don't wanna hear anybody say, oh, well, you're too short, or you, you can't ever be that way. I mean, that was like the biggest thing. A lot of people said to me, well, gee, you're so short. How are you gonna go into bodybuilding? I said, because I'm gonna be a complete physique. It isn't about how tall you are, how big you are. So when I won a lot of the championships from Teenage Mr. America to to the Mr. USA and these other titles is because I have his, was the most symmetrical, most proportionate, and the most graceful on stage because I really trained and learned the whole art of displaying your body, so I was a champion. Then after that, I retired and I got into then educating and training people to learn how, teach how they can themselves train themselves, eat healthier foods, and be healthier people. And as I had that transition, I started realizing I had an ability, a gift to inspire others. Because here's the thing is, if, say you go into a gym and you, you meet a trainer, and the trainer's got a bigger stomach than you, <laughs> which I'm sure you've seen, okay? How are you gonna get inspired? I was just the one training the other day. Yeah, if you do these uh, crunches, you're gonna have this waist. <laughs> oh, I don't want that waist. <laughs> I don't want that waist. So you see what I'm saying, so you have to, live the life. You've got all these beautiful products, but you should do your best to be healthy for yourself. Because here's the thing is, you could tell I really care and love what I do. If I was just like this guy up here, hey, 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 I got, after we're done, you can order my uh, machine. I don't have any machine to sell. <laughs> I'm not selling any of that. 
My whole thing is to help others, and I'm paying it for it. I told my coach, that's what I'm going to do, because he changed my life. I could be, uh, I could have had a heart attack. I could have had diabetes. My, my grandmother, my grandfather, my aunts, and my mother died from complications from diabetes. My, my uncle died. My cousins, a couple of my cousins died. My father died from a heart attack. I had m several dear friends and family members that had died of cancer. So I'm 56 now. So I wish I could say to that doc, hey doc, look at me now. Because he was scared for me. And I wanted to tell him, he changed my life, that doctor. But unfortunately he passed away, Dr. Ryan. But he really was a very smart man because he really made a point of sharing with my mom and myself I needed to make these changes. But I really have to emphasize on all of you, you're in a wonderful company here. 124 is amazing. And it's really gonna soar. It really is, you've got a great team here, Doc Fran and Mark and everybody here, and, and Casey's wonderful and Scott is great. Everybody I've met are, are wonderful, wonderful people. And you have a support system here. But you've gotta to work together. But number one, you gotta work on yourself first because you can't go and tell people, this is a great product. Oh, you're gonna use this new uh, weight management program. Are they gonna to listen to you? Seriously. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you have to have this teeny little waist, don't get me wrong. Because as I mentioned in the video, it's more important to be physically fit than dwell on the weight. Because you could still be a bigger person, but be physically fit and more, uh, less likely to have any kind of heart disease or any health issues. Also think about it, with these products and taking the right attitude and being more active, it's the best form of healthcare. You are gonna save money, you're less likely gonna go to the doctor, you're less likely gonna need medication, and definitely less likely you're gonna go to the hospital, unless you get into a car accident or something, you know, or fall down off the stage. But, <laughs> but the thing about it is, think about it. All the expenses are because, with all these insurance companies, because. I do a lot of guest speaking. I, I recently did um, the launch of the new Health Heart Stamp with the Postmaster General and the Surgeon General and the President of the American Heart. And I was the MC for the event. And when I was talking to everybody about the health of our nation and everything, we were talking about the fact that a lot of people today have really dwelled on everybody's obese. All our kids are so fat. Let's focus on them being physically fit. And then eventually, the weight will come off. But don't measure everybody, you know, say, oh, they're so big. Because there's so many people that genetically, you're predisposed to have more weight than other people. Some people have big ankles and wrists, and some people have no shoulders, different types of bodies. But you still can have a better quality life. But you need to live the life. Because when you start speaking to people, and even if you have extra weight on you, you still can have a very strong and healthy body and a positive energy. And you can see in your eyes that you're full of life. And when you have these great products, you can improve your energy, improve the ability to really make your system stronger. Because with the Natural Burst, you're gonna be able to have a healthier system. When I started using it, I started really realizing less inflammation in my body. I noticed my waist even came down more because sometimes when you have inflammation now there's inflammation from like in a joint pain or if you strain yourself working out or inflammation if you have like some skin irritation but people don't realize when you eat certain foods it creates inflammation of the body digestive tract especially and when you have a formula that's so great like that that can actually help you digest your foods better also cut your cravings for sweets, for those with great minerals and things that are in there, and also give you energy. That's fantastic. But now, you also have to do the rest, because I always look at being physically fit as a recipe. So it's not just the diet, it's not just the exercise, it's also the attitude. And these are all ingredients. And then when, you know, I, I do these talks when I was down in Washington with the Surgeon General. I have people coming up to me and they go, well, what's more important, diet or exercise? 
Is it like, I hear it's 75 diet and 25 exercise. I go, no, 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 no. It's like making a cake. I mean, you make a, or an apple pie. You need the apples, you need the flour, you need all the other ingredients. It isn't just that one thing. And people always, even when I get interviewed like on Extra and Entertainment Tonight, I always get this from the reporter. Okay, what's more important, diet or exercise? I go, don't do that. Why do you always like to ask me these questions? It's a recipe. And then there's one reporter, uh, it was downtown Julie Brown from Entertainment Tonight. She goes, oh yeah, you, you Italians always talk about food. Everything is related to food. I said, no, no, no. It is a recipe. Because when you start eating healthier and you start exercising and you have a healthier attitude towards life, it changes everything. It's a game changer, it really is. Because I don't know if you realize this, but a habit is something you do and you don't realize it. You just do it because it's like automatic pilot. And people don't understand that there's been studies that show that 90% of our behavior is based upon habits. We develop habits very easily. It only takes 21 days to develop a habit, good or bad. And that's why we have obesity and such ill health in America. Because people are doing things and they don't realize it, even doing it, or why they're doing it. They, whatever we eat, whatever music we listen to, the way we treat people, we're on automatic pilot. How many times you go into a movie theater, you always go down there and then sit to the little towards the center, but on the right side, right there, right there, you like that. And all of a sudden, they're always sitting right over there. It's always that one spot. Or like when you pull into, uh, you know, uh, the market, you always park into that on the third row to the right, or it's our habit. And did you know like in your closet, you, you use 20% of your clothing 80% of the time. And this is a proven fact. Think about it. How many times you go through it, oh, well, that's my favorite shirt, oh, those shoes, I got this important meeting, and all this other stuff. It's not being used, you're only using 20%. So, you know, think about it. So start to think about do I really want to go to that restaurant on Friday night, or why am I going to this restaurant? That food wasn't that good that time, and why do I always have to sit on the table on the left? So it's so funny, as I mix it up, I go to a movie theater, I change where I sit, I'm gonna sit over here. Because I don't want to be falling prey to my habits. I don't want to do that. I want to do things because I made that choice. So what we have to do is not only say, here, these are great products, and this is why they're great products, but encourage the people, whether it's texting, emailing, a call, you've got to really encourage people to pursue a healthier life. Get them healthy. Because you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna walk around. People are gonna go, wow, Tom, you look great. Wow, what have you been doing? Ah, I gotta tell you about 124, changed my life. Now they're gonna say it because they really mean it and because people are saying things. But if you're kind of walking around thinking it was just a way to make money to retire, it maybe lasts for a little while, and maybe go to a good salesperson, but you won't reach the optimal goal. You'll still make money, don't get me wrong if you're a great salesperson, but it's not just about the money. It's about healthy, healthier, better quality life, paying it forward, getting other people inspired, changing their lives, healthier choices, and using these great products to help them as tools. They need tools. You need, they need to really, first thing whenever I talk to anybody about becoming physically fit, it's the gut. That's the first thing we have to assess. I remember when I got a phone call and it was to uh, work with Al Pacino. I was like, wow. Now being Italian, I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, Don Corleone, <laughs> Tony Montana, you know, it's from Scarface, I was like, wow. <laughs> so sure enough, I was told to go to Shutters on the beach in Santa Monica. He had the whole top floor <laughs> was his. Because he didn't want anybody to come up. He was like Howard Hughes, you know? He doesn't like people around him. So sure enough, I go up to the suite, knock on the door. I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. Wow. Knock on the door. He opens the door. <laughs> He's like this tall. It's like, oh. <laughs> wow. Now I know what I, kids like when I was a kid, I was like, wow, it's nice actually <laughs> to feel tall, you know? And he had like black socks on, dress pants, and black Hanes shirt, and he had like 
<laughs> ketchup and <laughs> egg and juice, like, you know. Hey, come on, hey, come in. You want, you want something to eat? It's just like being at my Uncle Tony's, you know. So we go out on the, the, the deck and it's facing the ocean. Beautiful. She goes, all right, listen. He goes, I don't need you to get me ripped up like uh, Matt Damon, Kevin Spacey. Bev had um, the twins, and I'm doing this for me. I want to be able to see them graduate. I want to dance at their wedding. I want to feel good. Okay, I got to tell you something. I party. Oh, you can hear that voice. Oh, when he, you know, yep, I did it all. Hey, I don't regret it because I did it. But he goes, now I'm paying for it. He told me about the, the, his foot problem, the, the gout, all those other things that are going on in this system. Not good. I saw his fingernails deficient in minerals, skin. I assessed everything. Right away, when I go in, I assess people. I said, Al, the first thing we got to do is talk about what you're eating. He goes, oh, oh no egg whites. And, oh, I'm not eating oatmeal. So, no, no way. I go. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not the typical trainer. I said, because I'm not going to tell you you have to eat that. I said, you like macaroni, right? Oh, I love macaroni. That's what we say, uh, it's pasta, so you know. And uh, you like meatballs, right? Yeah, I love, I love meatballs. I said, okay. And you like marinara? Oh, I could drink it. Oh, me too. <laughs> me too. So I said, okay, well, this is what I'm going to tell you. Think about it, okay? The macaroni is the complex carb. The meatball are the protein and the fat, and the sauce is the vitamin C and the lycopene. Oh, you're, you're brilliant. I love it. So think about it. I have a bowl of macaroni and a meatballs in the morning and a cup of coffee. He goes, oh, I could do that. No problem. To this day, I saw him not too long ago at the uh, Four Seasons Hotel brunch. You still eat the macaroni and meatballs? Oh, yeah, every day. That's, what it, that's his breakfast, serious. <laughs> that's his breakfast. But you know what? It works. But now, I took it to another level. Of course, I have him get the gluten-free pasta, OK? Turkey meat, and bake it, not frying the meatballs. And very little oil. Because the way we, we cook in my family is we don't put a lot of oil in the pan. Because when you're making sauce, a little recipe here. You slice up the, the garlic thin, and you drop it so it just dissipates. And you just have enough oil that you can fry the tomatoes, just enough. And you drop it in there. Because that olive oil is very good for hormone production and joints, and really good for the skin. And when you put all the, the fresh basil and you saute it, and you can have a beautiful sauce that's really, really delicious and nutritious. So I related to this man who was never going to eat the eight whites, the fruit, and the meatballs had to replace that and the macaroni. So I had to assess what to do with him. Now I said to him, I said, okay, now we kind of talked about that. What about exercise? He goes, well, Bev told me about uh, this uh, Pilates. I go, Al, do you know what Pilates is? <laughs> no. Okay. Just think of it like a bed with springs, and I'm going to strap up your ankles and put your legs behind your head. It goes, oh, no, 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 no. What do you do? I said, the weights. He goes, fine, I'll do the weights. <laughs> okay, so now, <laughs> it's so funny. He goes, when can we start? I said, when do you want to start? Tomorrow? Yeah, all right. He goes, I love softball. I said, where, where are you going to play softball? He told me the park, where it'll be. I said, okay. I'll meet you 10 a.m. at the softball park because he said he was going to do it at 12. I said, this way you're nice loosened up for the game. You play even better. Great. I like that. I said, don't forget, meatballs and macaroni and your double espresso in the morning. Okay. So sure enough, um, he, he's pulling into the parking lot and he comes in with in a Mercedes, big Mercedes, blacked out windows, black car. <laughs> Pulls in like this. And I was coming in the same time. I have an SL Mercedes blacked out windows. So I get out of the car, and he gets out of the car. And he goes, 
nice car. I said, you too. <laughs> it was so funny was he had black Adidas sneakers, black dress socks, black dress slacks, belt, black Hane shirt without the, you know, the stains on it. And that was his workout. <laughs> and I, of course, had all black too. <laughs> so now he goes, all right, he goes, let's, uh, let's go for a walk. And he, he had his sports jacket, so he's like this. And it looked like something out of The Godfather. <laughs> and we're, wa we're walking around this park. It's a dog park, but it's had the baseball field. So now, all of a sudden, you know, it's kind of a few people walking the dogs and a few kids, like, playing a little ball over there. So now he goes, this is good. I go, good. What? He goes, here, under the tree. Let's work out over here. He wanted to work out under the tree. I thought he wanted to meet at the park because it was a gym up the block. It was going to take him to the gym. And now I was like, oh, OK. You want to work out over here? I'll be right back. So I remember I had a beach towel in the car. That's all I had was a towel. So now I had to figure out, what am I going to do with this guy? Al Pacino wants to work out. It's his very first workout. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? So I, I, I thought quick. I said, OK. I said, Al, I know you're tight. I'm going to put this towel down. I'm going to stretch you out. Hold on to the tree. <laughs> shaking his legs, shaking his leg. Bop, bop. He goes, wow, that feels great. Got up, he goes, I love it, I love it. I said, OK, now we're going to do Jack Lane's favorite exercise, jumping jacks. I don't know how many people know, but jump, jumping jacks was Jack Lane's. He created it, and that's why it's j jumping jacks. We're doing jumping jacks and doing all the fun stuff. Now, all of a sudden, seriously, there was a sea of people. About as many as two, three hundred people watching us. <laughs> They're on their cell phones. How oh, Pacino's working out? He's doing jumping jacks in a park <laughs> with this big muscle guy. And it's so, it was so funny. And all the people just watched. They kept their distance. He went and played the softball game. His team won. He was a champ. He would hit. He was so funny. He used to hit the ball, and he was a good hitter. And then he had his assistant. <laughs> Luke, run for him. <laughs> he said, no, no, Luke, I'm doing it. It was the funniest thing to see. Now, just think about it, dress clothes, and he's playing. It was hysterical. So we became really good friends, but the main thing was I became creative. He understood that I knew about food. I also, having a Sicilian grandmother, she taught me when I was eight years old that I had to learn how to cook. If I want to eat, I got to learn how to cook. So I was prepared for life. But I shared my wisdom. So whatever your wisdom may be, or focus, or specialty is, you really have to remember when you're working with people to really continually make sure that you care about them. Because when they feel that you care about them, they'll become loyal to you. Because you're in a business, it's a networking business. Now, you could take this part time. You could do it full time, whatever way you like. But Think about it. What's better than making a very good living and be able to retire with a comfortable income, doing something you love to do and is really great in helping other people? That's what I say life's all about. I mean, how many times you, you work with people or you have a job, other job besides what you're doing here, you go to work and you go, oh, this sucks. <laughs> oh, I can't stand her. I'm straight to be nuts. Oh, my, oh, that boss, oh my God, I can't, I don't want to look at him today. You know, who wants to deal with that? So I'm saying if you really, really get revved up and you think about it and you rev up your people that you work with, you can really start changing lives of people and making a very good living from it. And that's what this is all about, you know? It's not just, hey, here's a great product or, hey, make some extra money. It's making a, a lifestyle where you can have a wholesome life and a wholesome living from something that's really beautiful and good for people. I mean, I became creative. I mean, listen, my father was a landscaper. Probably if I went that way, I probably would have lost the rest of my hair. I would have been like my father, you know? I'd probably have five kids and drive in a minivan, you know, or something like that. And a wife like this. Because all my cousins have wives like this big. I mean, really that big. They got like 20-inch arms. And then they got calves. You know, when I go to my family reunions, I feel like I'm from out of space or something. It's like, 
I used to say to my mother, are you sure you nothing was going on with you and the milkman? Because she used to go out the door to talk to him. I said, Ma, was, you know, because I, I don't look like anybody in my family. You see, seriously, I, Sarah went to one of my reunions, and they were like this, but not good like this. I mean, one shoulder's here, one's like that. <laughs> I see my cousin Frankie, he had three triple bypasses. I'm like, wow. So that's another incentive. Think about it. You should really start to ask people about their health. I mean, don't get nosy about the exact medication, but find out their family history. Because think about it. They have diabetes in their family. If they start gaining too much weight, high sugar, high carbs, they could trigger and end up getting diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2. I mean, I know people that have, at 40, got it. And they were healthy and everything was fine. I recently uh, was invited to be on the board of the American Diabetes Association. And I feel so honored and privileged. And now I'm going to be writing articles for American Diabetes. I'm actually going to tell them about the products here. Let's see if I get this up. Now, now, the reason why I'm on there is because I'm not selling some kind of elliptical, self-propelled, you know, you know, machine, because they know I'm the real deal. Now, Jacqueline and I became very, very good friends over the years. And um, I said to Jack, I said, you know, Gus, you got to tell me something. Why, why didn't we jump over, you know, off the piers and, and swimming with shackles and all that crazy stuff? He goes, well, we didn't have Twitter or Facebook. I had to get people's attention. <laughs> He goes, I said, well, thank God, because I'm not doing that. Because, <laughs> you know, he had groomed me to kind of continue on his work, which I'm proud to do. And um, last year, we had an event at a uh, mall called The, um, the Grove in uh, California, in Hollywood. And I had a big event, because they put on these events across the country that are free to the public. And 64,000 people showed up. Yeah. And Jack Lane's wife, Elaine, was given the Health Advocate Lifetime Achievement Award. And she goes, Michael, she goes, I don't know, this feels strange. I said, why? She goes, because my whole life, it was all about Jack. I never got anything. I said, well, you should, and you're getting it now, because my mom was inspired watching you, and she inspired me, and that's why I'm here today. And she cried. We both cried. I hugged her. She was so touched because this is the first time anybody made me feel I had value. Do you realize that? She was married to the most inspirational, powerful person. But unfortunately, it was all about him. And my mission, when I say I'm going across the country shaping America, it's not all about me. It's all of us together that are going to do it. See, that's the difference from what Jack did because he didn't have people coming aboard with him. I don't want to be the only person. I want to be part of a movement to shape up our country. Thank, thank you. And, and we can do it together because you've got the products, we've got the brains, we've got the formulator that's amazing that could make other amazing products that are tools, resources. But I want to see next year, I want to see 10 times this many people. Yes. And you can do it. <laughs> you know, my very first event, I was like going around the, my community going, yeah, I'm going to shape up America. This was 2001. I said, but we've got to start somewhere. So there's this little park in Westwood. And I invited uh, a couple of chiropractors, Pilates instructors, yoga instructors, and, I, and trainers, and I said, come on out. Well, I'll get some canopies and tables, and we'll have a Shape of America event here in Westwood. OK. So I had about maybe 63 people, and most of them were the people I invited. <laughs> Not coming, it was just, and they were like, so they, I said, but you know what? I, we don't have that many people, but let, why don't you start talking? So now the dietician 
was talking to the Pilates instructor. And then the trainer was talking to the chiropractor. I said, get to know each other. Look to the right, look to the left, look right in front of you. Get to know everybody. So now everybody started exchanging cards and talking to people. The chef that I invited from this restaurant came out and this pet person came out and this veterinarian was talking to some of the people. I said, talk, mingle. So now I had another event at another park a few months down the road. I had 300 people. I was like, mm, not bad. It's getting better. It was growing. But I said, network, talk. You work together, exchange, barter. And they started, and I started getting emails. Hey, I met this great trainer, and I'm, I'm doing all the nutrition for his clients. And I met this chiropractor, and the chiropractor wanted me to do Pilates at their office, and I've moved my practice into his practice. I was like, I started hearing all these great success stories. So then I started inviting more and more people. And then I did an event in downtown LA. And I invited the mayor and the city council, and they gave me a, a proclamation for making it Health and Fitness Week. And I had about 2,400 people. I was like, hey, this is cool. This is great. And everybody was having fun. I had people doing pet fitness, the dogs running over the, the hurdles and going through the thing, and I had the kids doing little exercises, and the karate guys, I brought the sumo wrestlers doing the sumo stuff, I had the boot camp guy, I had the Zumba people, the salsa, I was like, wow, this is the fitness and, uh, wonderland over here, this is great, and it started growing. And then I did another event in Beverly Hills, and we had probably close to about 12,000 people. And it was just spectacular. It was in the parking lot of the Beverly Hills Hilton. And I had, I made sure I was going to get everybody out. I put exotic cars. I put a classic cars. I put custom motorcycles. I had a pet fitness show. I had a Miss Fitness show. I had strength competitions. I put a full-size boxing ring. Mixed martial arts. I had everything. I had face painting for the kids. I had a kid's obstacle course. I said, now I got something for everybody. And sure enough, we had thousands of people from all over, from the valley to the beaches. It was tremendous. And I said, damn, about 28,000 people. Whoa. They're getting it. And I just like to be part of it. I was barely even on the stage. I just, no, 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 keep doing your, what you know. I, I, I was proud, like a proud daddy. So then I got um, contacted by a representative from NBC who said, you've got something really good. We have these NBC for your health expos and they are terrible. I go, I know. <laughs> I go to them, and I said, you do all this great stuff, but there's no excitement. You see people there getting their blood test, and you see people get a yo-yo, <laughs> and floss in a pen. You come to my event, you're going to take a Zumba class, you're going to take a Pilates class, you're going to meditate, you're going to see a chef show you how to re cook food and re-engineer recipes. Personal shoppers show you how to use more than 20% of your clothing in the closet or get rid of it, you know. And all of a sudden, they said, let's merge. So then we did an event. It was down in, uh, uh, it was Florida. 43,000 people. And they mainly came because my team, we went out there and put on a great show at the Miami Beach Convention Center. So then I said, hey, we got a big event. And it's in Washington, D.C. I said, okay, let's pull all stoppers out. I sent all my letters to everybody, down to the White House and everywhere. And I'm, I'm going to make this a massive event. And I flew in my team, and we put on a great show at the Washington, D.C. Convention Center. It was a two-day event. It was last year. We had 93,000 people. Thank you. And, and, and here's the key thing is, it's the same thing the way this company could grow. That's right. That's right. Focus, right. you know, live the life, and continually inspire your people. Get them really healthy. Then you don't even have to do much. When they feel so good, people are going to walk around going, what are you doing? Ho, oh, what are you doing? And that's where they can say, well, the products at 124. And my guy, JD, turned me on to it. It's changed my life. 
well, whoa, 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 where can I get this product? Well, it's more than just a product. This is a, a, a family. It's a network of people that have the same interests of living a healthier life and also being able to make extra income or maybe a full-time income or retirement plan through using these products and working together and good people. I mean, I love the energy in this room. And last night, I loved meeting all these wonderful people and talking. And well, I met these two guys from South Dakota. Where are you? We were talking about going hunting, <laughs> you know? I hope none of you, are, you have a problem with the hunting. <laughs> but um, I haven't gone hunting in years. But, you know, the thing about it was is that I really love, it was like family here. People were excited to meet each other. Just think about it. Now you take this excitement, get home, and get to work. Get out there and talk to people. You know, people said to me, did you get all these celebrity clients by doing what I do? I love what I do. I mean, that's, listen, to train all these actors that I've worked with, it's like a writer. You can write a book and it's a success. You never have anything after that. You're not a true author unless you've had multiple successes. Because I've spoken to so many writers. They go, yeah, I had one book. But after I had five, six books, yeah, I realized I got something special. And that's where you have something special here. It's an opportunity through 124 to get out there in everyday life, your experiences of talking to people, and let them understand about this wonderful organization and these wonderful products and how you can help change your life forever. It's not a six-week makeover. The weight management is not just for a few weeks. Just, I just want to get some weight off for that anniversary or that party, I'm going to reunion. No, it's a lifestyle. Yes. Because it comes back, all the studies show. You go into that six week makeover program, you do it, you, you, you get sucked into that, okay, that program, and then all of a sudden you just explode and binge. You have to change here, it's, it, it, it's up here. But if you start being aware of living a better quality life, and really learning to take better care of yourself. Again, it's not having that teeny little waist, if that's not your desire, just living a healthier life and looking and feeling better. And that's contagious. And people have to understand, again, think about your choices. And also, when you become physically fit and you become healthier, think about having a healthier life. I mean, start appreciating that you have a a job. I appreciate you have hopefully good co-workers and also appreciate who you have in your life. Did you're blessed to have someone in your life you care about and they care about you and if you have children. Hey, listen, they may not have the best grades but if you encourage them and hard work and time they'll have better grades and that's okay. You know, but I see so many parents that pressure their kids to play so many sports. That's not good. You need to really speak to the child and see what they want. You know, as they get older, you have to see, do they want to play that sport? Or do they want to write? Or they, do they want to play an instrument? I had um, one of my clients is Kevin Bright. He was the producer and director for Friends. Very successful TV show. <laughs> and uh, he said, Mike, he goes, I need you to help me. I have two boys. They're 16 years old, fraternal twins. They don't look like each other, but one of the brothers was very athletic, perfect six pack, played every sport, could show him a sport one day, and he's an expert at it. That's, I mean, genetically, he just was amazing. The other son, real curly hair, bad skin, fatty liver, about 40 pounds overweight, and, and shoulders hunched over. I'll take care of it, Kevin. So we went outside, we went for a walk, and they live in Mandeville Canyon, and we went for a walk up Mandeville Canyon, really beautiful, because I really wanted to connect with them, because again, it's up here first. No, no, I just to go work out, because I think that's impersonal. I, I have friends that are trainers, and they just go, oh, I'm just going to take them to the gym and work them out. Oh, man, I get to connect. That's what you got to do. You got to connect with your people first. You can't just like, hey, oh, here's the products and here's what you'll get and you can make this much money in a month. No, 
kind of bond with them, get to know them, understand where they're coming from. Sometimes that pressure will spook them or overload them. So I connected with Justin. And Justin wasn't the kind of kid that wanted to go do weights. At first, he did. I said, what do you like to do? He goes, well, I always wanted to box. I said, oh, cool. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll get some pads, some gloves. And we'll... There's a nice tree over there. I got that one from Al. <laughs> get some shade with the pads. I have some fun, shadow box. Wow. So his father would watch us from the top of the house. They had a... You gotta see the house like a $22 million Mediterranean villa. And I see him by his balcony like this. I'd be waving to Kevin, be waving back. And it's just the sun's uppercuts and right cross, left hook, and he's doing all these things and he's having fun. And every time we walked up that hill, the kid started walking up more erect, like a little bit of attitude. I was like, yeah, look at this kid, right? <laughs> so then I started saying, hey, Let's hit the gym now, because I built this great gym in their house. So they started pumping up the weights, and I started seeing this young man grow. His muscles grew, his waist shrunk, his skin started clearing up. He even got a haircut. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow. I mean, I saw him morphing into a really wonderful, healthy young man. He went off to college. He is in incredible shape. He actually is a better tennis player than his brother, because I got him into playing tennis. He is a brilliant mind. He's a writer like his dad. And uh, he's pursuing, pursuing music and film production. And his father said that he saw the interest in his son change towards really focusing on his career, because he felt being unhealthy was a distraction, like it was with me. I was distracted. I, I didn't feel good. I couldn't focus on anything when you don't feel good. So being healthy will make you a better person and make you a more productive person. And so that's what you got to think about being healthy is not just losing weight and getting firm and getting a smaller waist. It's becoming a better human being. And again, I have to emphasize being a good friend to people. And Asking them to just continue to pay it forward. Again, we'll, they'll do your work. It won't take a lot of coaching and encouragement. Once you inspire people to make changes and to live that life for themselves, they're going to want to share with everybody else. Oh, I've got to share with my sister. I've lost so much weight. And they're going to get on the weight management program. And they're going to start taking a natural burst and natural boost because they, they'll have the product in them there that's going to make them feel better and be healthier. Because... Look at five hour energy. Some of these are the products. The adrenals get shot. I mean, I have so many people that take three or four of those drinks a day and their adrenals are shot. Their system is so weakened. And the whole thing about it is, is when you start putting those products in you that have toxic ingredients, you become toxic you are becoming unhealthy. So you may have energy for a short period, but then you'll crash, or you'll start feeling like you're getting sore throats and colds all the time because your system is being overworked. It's being drained. So many people, their adrenal glands are overworked, and their liver and their kidneys are inflamed. And I'll tell you something, when you're unhealthy and your body's not functioning right, I mean, I'd like to take a, a, a toll here. How many people have trouble sleeping? Raise your hands. Okay, it's a good amount. Now, there's many reasons why people have trouble sleeping. Also, how many people have a, sometimes problems digesting their food or stomach aches or gas? Okay. <laughs> Hey, I was in the men's room. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> like an orchestra in there. No, but anyway, but these are signs. These are signs, okay? R restless sleep. You're not getting a good REM sleep. Bloated abdominal gas, discomfort, problems digesting food. It's not just hot food. It's just digesting your food. So these are signs. Aches and pains. 
Come on, elbow, neck, back, okay? These are things that using the products, but also being physically fit and living a better quality life will help you get rid of those problems. You'll sleep like a baby. You'll feel better. You'll have more energy. And you'll live a better quality life. People will see that you look and feel better. They'll be inspired to want to learn more about the products. They'll also see that you're also making a very comfortable living. And they realize that, wow, I, I'm so stressed out of work. And sometimes people put pressure on themselves, pressure to succeed. And that in itself is dangerous. Okay? So I just want to share with you tonight, or today, that I had a beautiful time being here. And I hope that my words have inspired you to make those necessary changes. And there's information on how you can get in touch with me. And feel free to contact me at any time if you need some help and inspiration. So thank you. Mr. Michael Torchell, ladies and gentlemen.